Rock and Roll Geek Show 810. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, it's the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original rock and roll geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name's Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Friday, November 3rd, 2017, and it's 7.11 p.m. when I'm recording this episode. It has been a long, long time since I've actually just sat in the, in the closet-sized studio and spun some tunes and just talked to you, my friends. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. Long time since I've done it. But I'm looking forward to it. It's Friday night. I'm going crabbing tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is the opening day of crab season. Actually, I'm going. I'm all loaded up and ready to go. But it's calling for high winds and rain. I'm going to get up at the at probably about four in the morning. Um, pile in my car. Everything's all loaded up, ready to go. And I'm going to drive down to Half Moon Bay. And if it's not too windy, I'm going to join hopefully a bunch of other kayakers and going to go out and try to catch some Dungeness crab. It's the opening day of crab season. It's a tradition. I had just started uh, kayaking last year after long after crab season already opened. So this is my first opening day of crab season. Looking forward to it if I can go out. But tonight I'm looking forward to sitting here drinking some beers, which I will take a sip of this fine Tecate now. Ah, <clears throat> Second one of the day. Oh, boy, that is that always the bit. All right. <sighs> Looking forward to sitting here, drinking some Tecates, spinning some tunes, and maybe playing a couple audio comments and reading your emails. Just like old times, friends. Going to start off with a song by the great Warner E. Hodges. Has a new album out called Right Back Where I Started. This song is called Sick of Myself. Somewhere else, wishing I was somewhere else. 
There you go. Holy fuck is that good. Damn. I was going to play that in the background uh, during the donation segment, but that's just too... That is... That's good. That's awesome. That is good. That is good, good, good. Holy shit is that good. Wow. Let's hear a little bit. Let's see how, how does the rest of this album sound? Um, yeah, this album is good. Might be in my top 10 this year, friends. Warner E. Hodges, right back where I started. All right. Speaking of the donation segment, thank you to everybody who donated to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Your donations keep this show alive. Without your donations, this show would be dead in the water. Putridly. All right. There are several ways you can donate to the show. One, if you don't have any money and don't want to donate anything, you can just go to rockandrollgeek.com and click the Amazon link. And then it'll take you to Amazon. You buy anything you're going to buy anyway. I'll get a little kickback. And that's a way to support the show and be a cheap ass and not have to pay a thing. But if you think the show is worth something and you feel like donating some money, maybe the show is worth a dollar to you. Maybe the show is worth a thousand dollars to you. Go to rockandrollgeek.com, click on one of two links. You can go to Patreon, you can click the Patreon link, which is patreon.com slash slash R and R Geek, and you can donate there, or you can hit the PayPal link and donate there. The donors this week, I would like to thank everybody who donated. Let me get some music to play in the background. Warner E. Hodges is just too good to play in the background. I'm going to play Brand new UFO. This is a covers album called The Salentino Cuts. Let's see. How about, uh, what's the first song? Hippie music. That sucks. That's pretty, that's pretty, pretty bad. How about, uh, they're doing a, they're doing mantra song. How's this say? All right, that's good. You can go to patreon.com slash Geek like Daniel Segan did. Every episode that I put on Patreon, he donates $5 to. Yeah. No. Some of that UFO playing Montrose doesn't seem to fit. Thank you to Michael Street, who donates $5 every episode. By the way, Michael Street did an episode with me at the Rock and Pot Expo. I'm going to post that this week. I have been holding back from posting that episode because uh, everybody got so bent out of shape the first one that I posted from the Rock from the Rock and Pot Expo. This one, if they got pissed off at that first one, they're going to get pissed off at this one. But you know what? At this point, I don't care. I'm just going to post it how it is. Yeah, we're talking a little bit of shit, but we're doing it in good fun, and it's no harm intended. So if anybody has a problem with it, they can suck it. All right. So I'm going to post Michael Street and I, my episode this week. Michael Street also sent me a nice piece of vinyl, brand new replacements, double vinyl album from Sire Records live at Maxwell's. I'm going to play that for a vinyl track of the week later on in the show. Thank you, Michael Street, for donating and thank you for the for the Replacements album. I love it. Thank you to Ken Kennedy who donates $5 every episode. Let me turn up the UFO. Thank you to my good friend Shiaki Hirahara of the Metal Moment Podcast and the Japanese Metalhead Show. Happy birthday, Chiaki. I think his birthday is Saturday. Hopefully I will present him with some Dungeness Crab for his birthday. Thank you to Brian Springer who donates $5 every episode. Thank you to my podcast mentor and co-host of Mad at Dad, Dave Slusher, who donates $5 every episode. Thank you to Paul Underwood for the $2. Paul Underwood, who also was a guest co-host 
And we did not talk shit about anybody. Thank you to Mario Zoth for the $2 every episode. Thank you to Bruce McMillan for the $2 every episode. Thank you to fellow kayaker Matthew Hunt for the $2. Thank you to Eric Stowell for the $2. Thank you to Robert Harvey for the $2 every episode. Thank you to brand new donor Bonstone for the $1 every episode. Thanks to Mike Dixon, $1 every episode. Thanks to John Richardson for $1 every episode. And finally, thanks to Corey Kohler for the $1 every episode. Thanks to the people who donated on PayPal. First of all, let me take a sip of this fine Tecate to everybody who donated on the Patreon. Ah! PayPal donors, thanks to Douglas Free for the two dollars for the twenty dollars. Thanks to my first girlfriend ever, Elodie Johns, for the twenty dollars. Thank you to Paul Fondry for the ten dollars. Thank you to Sherry and Jeff Feelalalalaki for the fi- for the ten dollars. Thanks to Dave Frank. My glasses are fogged up. I can't read. I'm gonna clean these things off for a second here. Oh, uh, that's no better. It's even worse. Don't clean your glasses with dirty a dirty shirt. Thanks to Dave Franco for the $10. Thanks to James Venners for the $10. Thanks to Jason Shepard for the $10. Thanks to friend of the show and friend of mine, Todd Cunningham, for the $10. What else we have here? About, uh, Robin Trower song? Let's hear how this sounds. I'm telling you, it's... Vinnie Moore who kills it and not in a good way yes he's a ripping guitar player but man it's not UFO Phil Mogg sings this pretty good thanks to Bradley Lisko for the $10 BJ Lisko for the $10. Thanks to friend of the show and friend of mine, Ralph Miller, for the $10. Thanks to Dave Jackson and the School of Podcasting for the $10. Thanks to Brett Garski for the $5. Thanks to John Boveri for the $5. Thanks to Richard Strom for the $5. Thanks to Andrew Howell for the $5. Thanks to Dale Roller for the $5. Thanks to Christopher Del Grande, who took me to see UFO last time they came here, for the $5. Thanks to Jer... Was it last time they came? No, it was the time before. Thanks to Jer O'Carroll for the $5. Thanks to Kelly Mitchell for the $5. Thanks to John Offenloch for the $5. Forgot where I left off. John Tennis for the $5. Thanks to Greg Long for the $5. Thanks to Jeff C.A. for the $5. Thanks to Alex James Muscat for the $5. Thanks to Dean Gillespie for the $5. Thanks to Eric Lentz for the $5. Thanks to Kelly Mitchell again for another $5. Thanks to Stephen Mascord for the $5 who put me in his book. His book is called... Oh, I can't find it. It's down there underneath all my stuff. Thanks to Michael Williams for the $2. Thanks to Adrian Boshon, Bosch Rock in the forums and in the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page, which I do not, did not start, but I do approve people. Go to, the, go to Facebook and search for Rock and Roll Geek Show and I will approve you, friends. Thanks to Deborah Dreyfus, if that's your real name, for the $2. Thanks to Richard Fusey for the $2. Thanks to Lassie Sattvithagen for the $2. Thanks to John Skiller for the $2. Thanks to Bradford Page for the $2. Thanks to Peter Spark for the $2. And finally, thanks to William Moffat for the $1. Thanks to everybody who donated this month. Without your donations, this show would die horrible, putrid, stench-filled getting lost in the fog in a kayak and run over by a boat trying to rescue you kind of death. I take a sip of this fine Tecate to everybody who donated this month. Thank you, friends. I really, really, really appreciate it. Please keep them coming. 
I could use some more. Whatever you think the show is worth, donate that much. I would appreciate it, friends. I also got a piece of mail here. I'm going to open it because it could be from a listener. And that's a good time to open this during the donation segment. Let's see what it is here. It's a flat item. What is it? Oh, it's a poster. Okay, this is from... I don't know who this is from. It could be from Rodney Cross because Rodney Cross said he sent me something. Let's let's look at what this poster is. It's it's hermetically sealed. In, uh-oh, I just fucking bent the damn thing. Ugh. I'm trying to get it open here. It's, I can't see the poster because it's got a it's got an invoice inside of it. Oh. It is a Nazareth poster. Nazareth with special guest Thin Lizzy, March 17th at the Stanley Theater. Thank you so much for whoever sent to whoever sent this. I think it's Rodney Cross. Whoever sent me this Nazareth poster, thank you so much, friends. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, wait, is there something else in here? Thanks again, friends. Whoever sent me this Nazareth poster, I take a sip of this fine Tecate to you. Ah, that will be the album art in this episode. All right. I got a couple of audio comments. Let me see what, if I can find them here. How about this? Man, today's been a cool day. Seen a lot of familiar faces out there. Kind of like that. Hello, Michael Butler. It's oh. Eric, a rock and roll plea. Hey, Eric. A quick show review of Tom Kiefer oh. on the band Cinderella. Tom Kiefer rushed to the hospital during a show, I think. I think he had a heart attack or something. Not a huge Tom Kiefer fan. Casey, my friend, is a big, huge Cinderella and Tom Kiefer fan. Pardon me, I'm burping up this fine Tecate. <laughs> But wishing Tom Kiefer a ha- uh, healthy recovery. Back to you, Eric, the rock and roll plebe. Solo at the Harris Casino. Oh, all back up here. Her. Van Cinderella. Solo at the Harris Casino in Chester, Pennsylvania, which is about 15 minutes south of Philadelphia. And it was on Friday, October 13th. And first, I want to just toast you with the gulp. Of Hobo Brewing Company Boom Sauce IPA. I'll drink one with you, friend. <sighs> All right, so <sighs> Tom Kiefer. I was curious to see him because I did like some Cinderella uh-huh. and Tom Kiefer's Slade. I had nothing against Cinderella. I, as a matter of fact, they were kind of they were pretty good. But I wasn't a big fan of the whole hair metal thing. But Cinderella wasn't bad. BBC kind of vocal thing, um, and I was invited. By some friends who offered to drive so I decided why not go see a rock show um, and uh, we got to the casino where he was playing around 745 just before the doors open walked through the casino floor to the venue in the back um, and the first band came on they were called Witch Hunt Witch Hunt and I think they probably were some kind of local cover band uh, like Featherwood. About 50 seconds of it. It was kind of thrash music played by a bunch of husky dudes wearing sports jerseys. Um, so we decided to go out to the casino floor since it wasn't our thing. And that is where I discovered the. Till gl- it's gone! All right. Free of the free casino drink. In the oh, yeah. That's right. The free casino drink, I believe, if, you, if you're gambling, you drink free, right? I haven't been to a casino in a while, and I'm not a gambler, so I didn't realize how now they've automated the drink ordering process. So as long as you have some money in the machine, you can order drinks through a touch screen display, and they have anything you'd want, just beer, shots, mixed drinks, so, I mean, it was pretty cool to get the free drinks, considering they were charging, I think, like $6 for the special, which was Bud Light, inside the... Um, 
the, the stage area. So, um, I put a dollar in the video poker machine and eventually I even just cashed out that dollar. So you have to time it where the waitress is coming by, right? Thing other than some tips. So, just drinking whiskey sours and <laughs> Amaroto sours and beer and everything. So that, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, so at some point we went back in and the second band on the bill was finishing up. They were called Mach 22. They were kind of a modern hard rock kind of sounding band that didn't really care for them either. Um, the only, and the only thing really I, I could note about them is that their guitar player, uh, is the son of the guitar player from Cinderella. So huh. I just think it's interesting that Maybe Tom Keeper together. has the son of his former band opening up for him, but I guess he doesn't really want to tour with uh, Jeff Labar, his former guitar player. But um, So after Mach 22, Tom Kiefer came out. Um, the venue could probably hold, I would say, 750 to 1,000 people, and I'd say it was about half to two-thirds full, so I guess it was Not a bad. pretty decent crowd for him. Not bad. Um American Hopefully. Heartbreak was American. Heartbreak? I think American Heartbreak opened for um, Cinderella in San Francisco at a club called the Pound, and I believe it was sold out. It was probably a good five or six hundred people there. The songs, I know you probably don't know them, and I wasn't even really paying close attention after all. I know that. some <laughs> of them. Uh, casino drink, so uh, though I, I did enjoy the show, but he he probably played for about an hour and 15 minutes I think, maybe up 14, 15 songs. Uh, he played about three or four or five of his solo album tunes and the rest were the Cinderella songs. Uh, Night songs. Shake Me. Shake uh, Me! Get... Any way you want. Alright. Road. Nobody's Fool. Nobody's Fool! And like, I don't know what you got till... Don't know what you got! Till it's gone. On hit the big ballot. Uh, on that song, he brought his wife out on stage to sing. I'm gonna bring out my wife to sing the hit. Him, and he invited the Philadelphia crowd to turn on their cell phones like lighters. Turn your cell phones on uh, like lighters. At the end of the show, they did a cover of the Stones, "Tumbling Dice." Call me to tell. Call me to tumble die. Uh. cool. And also, I think they finished up with a really not needed kind of bling to me cover of a little help from my friends. From the what would you uh, do if I sang out of tune? What else? So Sound-wise, I don't really care for this venue at the Haraz Casino in Chester, PA. This sounds kind of muddy. Performance-wise, though, it was all right. I had fun. Tom Kiefer. Good. That's what it's you know, all he about. looks like a rock guy. He's keeping himself Still in shape. Still looks good. He's got that whatever Aerosmith whatever look that he's trying to copy um <laughs> vocally he was okay i think he had his guitar player and a couple casey and i went to see um poison and cinderella it was poison cinderella and white snake i believe cinderella opened and um tom Kiefer lost his voice during the show he he couldn't sing he was like I don't know. He just lost it halfway through the set. He lost his voice. And one notable thing, uh, they had a big, you know, that big, huge Cinderella logo backdrop. They dropped the backdrop, like the backdrop drops, and another backdrop is behind it. So the Cinderella logo falls down. There's another logo behind it. It's the exact same backdrop. <laughs> we got a, quite a laugh out of that. But uh, yeah, Tom Kiefer lost his voice during the Cinderella show. I believe at the point and when Poison came on, uh, the bass player and Brett Michaels both got into a fist fight on stage. On back row, singers kind of handling the high parts. Um, and on bass, I'd really like to see someone like a Michael Butler on bass because the guy I would playing do it, it kind of looked a little douchey to me. I have a pet peeve where you see guys in bands who wear those like tiny, they're too small for their head fedora hats, and he was kind Ugh. of wearing one of those and it was kind of lame. So. Any, how about any fedora hat? Uh, I don't know. I, I wish the Butlers or Featherwitch would come and do an East Coast tour. Hey, get a club to invite us, and we will we will be there, friend. Um, I don't know. So th- th- that's it. Uh, it was a fun night. Uh, free drinks. Casino. It was fun, and uh, uh, 
Until next time, Michael Butler. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, Rock and Roll Plague. Rock and Roll Plebe. You, too, can leave a show review or audio comment. You can send me an email, like like Eric the Plebe did, Rock and Roll Plebe, to rockandrollgeek at gmail.com, or you can you can just record it on your phone and then email it to me. That's the that's the preferred way. You can also call the comment line, Eric code 706-621-ROCK, which I don't like because uh, Skype now sucks, so forgetting for voicemail but um if you want to do that area code 706-621 rockets area code 706-621-7625 thanks eric rock and roll plebe i really appreciate it friend i'd go see tom key for solo especially if it was for free all right let's play another song how about let me find my playlist here uh jesper binzer from dad has a solo album coming out and the songs that i've heard i really like a lot i love this guy's voice and I'm really looking forward to this album. This the, I don't know what the album's going to be called, but um, this song I'm going to play is called Dying is Easy, Rock and Roll is Hard. I think that's the title of the album. Too. Dying is easy,
There you go. Jesper Binzer from DAD. That song is great. I hope that album comes out before the end of the year because that one, if the both the songs I have heard from that album sound really good. I just love his voice. And I'm a huge DAD fan, as you I'm sure you know, but um can't wait for that album to come out. I'm looking on the Facebook. I put I usually post uh that I'm preparing to pull a a new show out of my ass, and I'm looking at some of the comments. Uh, Seth Massing wants a Darkness album review. I just now, on, on Pledge Music, I, I pre-ordered this album on Pledge Music, and when it, it was supposed to come out, it came out on October 6th. Usually when an album comes out, they, put the, they release the songs in MP3 format immediately on the Pledge Music site. Well, the Darkness album, I have still not gotten the MP3s from the album. And I, I just got the CD in the mail like two days ago. So, Seth, I'm going. To, I'm planning on doing a track-by-track track of the new Darkness. But I need, I need to put it on the computer and actually give it a good listen. I have not listened to the whole album yet. I didn't want to illegally download it because I don't know why. I just... For some reason, I wanted to support The Darkness because I really love The Darkness a lot. So I'm going to do a track-by-track track of The Darkness album, Seth Massing. I appreciate the interest, in it, and I promise you I will. Somebody else wants to hear some uh, kayak and distress tales. If you'd like to hear about me getting lost in the fog in a kayak, listen to the last Mad at Dad episode. I thought I was going to die. And tomorrow I'm going crabbing, and hopefully I will not die. I will make sure I post this episode tonight. So that if I do die tomorrow, I'll at least have one in the can. So thank you for uh, the interest. Everybody who's, everybody who's commenting on the, on, the, uh, on the Facebook post and the, and the Facebook. You know, you stop doing a show. You stop doing a regular uh, show from the studio. You, get, you, lose, you lose the groove. I'm sorry. I'm out of it. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. I need to get back into... Uh, doing this on a regular basis. I have a track-by-track track of the Darkness album to do. I also want to do a track-by-track track of the new Professionals album, which is, what I've heard is really good. I'm going to play a Professional... Why don't I play a Professionals song right now? The The album, the Professionals, I don't know if you know about them, but uh, when the Sex Pistols broke up, <clears throat> Steve Jones and Paul Cook uh, did an album called... They put a band together called The Professionals. It was Steve Jones, Paul Cook, and... Um, who was the other guy? Uh, it was Steve Jones on guitar, Paul Cook on drums. Who else was in the band? Andy Allen was on bass, I think. I I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember. Uh, Andy Allen, Ray, and a guy named Ray McVeigh, I think, was on in the. Anyway, they put out an album called. <clears throat> I didn't see it coming. They did an album before that that never got released. It actually didn't. It, they re, they finally released an album called The Professionals. Um, it was recorded in 1980. In 1981, I believe, uh, I Didn't See It Coming came out. The first album didn't get released until like 97 or something like that. So the, al- the album I have is, is I Didn't See It Coming. It's a great album. Really great album. Well, now The Professionals are back. It is Paul Cook with the singer for the Yo-Yos, Tom Spencer, who I love the Yo-Yos a lot. They were great. A bass player named Paul Myers. Apparently, Steve Jones gave them... He's not, he's not in the band, although he did play on a few songs. He gave him his blessing to... He gave the band his blessing to uh, call it The Professionals. So he's, he's guessing on it. Also on the album is Phil Collin from... From Def Leppard, uh, the the guitar player from Adam and the Ants plays on it. Duff McKagan plays on it. Uh, the guitar player Billy Duffy from the Cult plays on it. Um, Chris McCormick from a great band called Three Colors Red plays guitar on it. All the songs I've heard, I really really like a lot. I'm going to do a track by track of that um, coming up as well. I might even have Tom Spencer on the show. We'll see. So I'm going to play for you a a professional song now. This song is called oh, where is it? okay. This song is called Hats Off. It has Duff McKagan on bass and Chris McCormick from Three Colors Red. This song is great. 
is called Hats Off. I played this on I the can dance hold, on, hold, on, hold on a second, hold on a second. I played this on the last Mad at Dab, but I'm gonna play it again for you. This song is called Hats Off. Broken down soldier Needs a little spice If he's ever gonna sleep tonight Gonna get colder When the last of the autumn tones Are swept from sight You might make it through to midnight Land fit for heroes Didn't rain true 100 years ago Where did your queen go? She's sitting high and dry And doesn't seem to know professionals that that is good man it's good punk rock it's nice nice and refreshing to hear something good i'm i'm gonna do a track by track of that album coming up as well soon all right i got an email from adam brusha or brusha i'm not sure how to pronounce your last name adam but he said hey michael i've been listening i've been hearing some buzz around the band called greta van fleet I ignored it until Alice Cooper brought them up. I checked out the four-song EP, and I loved it. They sound a lot like Led Zeppelin, and I know you're not a huge Zeppelin fan. Hold on, I'm, I'm, pulling, I'm pulling the band up on YouTube so that we can uh, listen to a little bit of Greta Van Fleet. All right, he says, I'm, I'm start it over here. All right, bad production. I've been hearing some... Uh, oh, pardon me, I'm burping. That's fine, Tecate. I've been hearing some buzz around the band Greta Van Fleet. I ignored it until Alice Cooper brought them up. I checked out their four-song EP, and I love it. They sound a lot like Led Zeppelin, and I know you're not a huge Zeppelin fan, but I'd like to know your thoughts. Even if it's not your cup of tea, it's cool to hear four young kids make this sound. Stay frosty, Adam. Adam, well, I'm glad you sent me this email. Thank you again. Rock and roll geek at gmail.com. 
every this band has a huge buzz. Huge buzz. They're apparently they're selling out everywhere they played. I've heard I've heard them on Eddie Trunk's show on on his series show. I heard them on um, another volume show. Everybody thinks these guys are the savior of rock and roll. What do I think about Greta Van Fleet? Well, let's hear let's hear a little bit of Greta Van Fleet. This is their the single Highway Tune. <laughs> This is the video. I'm playing it from YouTube. First of all, the bass player plays his bass really high. And he plays... And he plays barefoot. The singer sounds a lot like... Sounds a lot like Robert Plant. But he's got short hair. Both the guitar player and the bass player wear their guitars really high. The singer wears a ripped up t-shirt, which looks kind of contrived to me. The singer does all the Robert Plant moves, holds his microphone like Robert Plant, does the hand moves like Robert Plant, things with the microphone like Robert Plant. They are young kids. They have a lot of energy. So what do I think about Greta Van Fleet, um, Adam Brusha? One, I am glad that there is a huge buzz over a rock band. But to me, there's something about this band. Forget about the, the about the Led Zeppelin comparisons. I'm not a Led Zeppelin fan, and I don't think we need somebody who sounds exactly like Led Zeppelin. But put that aside. There's something about it that's just not really authentic to me. I could be wrong because I've only heard this one song. I don't know any of the other songs, and maybe they're great. I hope they make it huge, but eh, it's not really for me. Good luck to them. Glad to see kids playing rock. I'll stick with the darkness, but good luck to Greta Van Fleet. Not really my my cup of tea. I just think they lack a little authenticity. That I don't think that they have enough of a rock and roll edge. They seem a little. They're good players. They look. They all look like they're like MIT kids or whatever you call it. Yeah, Musicians Institute of Technology kids or, Ber- or Berkeley College of Music kids, little virtuoso kids. Eh, I prefer a little bit more. Uh, what's the word? Sloppiness in my rock and roll, I guess. But good luck to Greta Van Fleet. I hope that answered your question, Adam Brusha or Brusha. I really appreciate the. Uh, Email friend. All right, here's another audio comment. Hey, Michael Beller, this is Chuck Spear, the Rock and Roll Hoosier, checking in from the hey, UFO Saxon Jared James Nichols show in I, Miraville. I Indiana, saw the same tour. October 13th, 2017. So now we're in the car heading back home the morning after. Lots of ringing ears going on. Uh huh. Saxon were loud, right? So, obviously, show review time. UFO, Saxon, Jared James Nichols at the. I miss Jared James Nichols. I got there a little bit late. Chris Del Grande and I went to see him, and I, we got there a little bit. Too late. The Jared James Nichols guy was done playing by the time we got there. To be defunct, Star Plaza Theater in Merrillville, Indiana, which I may is have a played suburb there. of Chicago. I played, I played Maryville, Indiana, with uh, when I was in Exodus. We opened for Black Sabbath. It might have been the same venue. 
this place has been around since like the 70s and they are shutting it down in December. It's a real shame. A lot of famous bands have played there. 3,400 seat. Yeah, that's probably where we play. With a balcony. I've seen quite a few shows there in my day. Most major bands that are medium level bands, either on their way up or, or veteran bands, have played there numerous times. So, show started right at 730 with Jared James Nichols. Uh, this guy is really neat. He's uh, probably in his 30s. It's a three-piece band. He plays an Epiphone Les Paul uh, and he plays without a guitar pick, which I thought is interesting. But he plays really heavy. Um, I would say his style is somewhere in the neighborhood of Ted Nugent meets Zach Wilde. So kind of bluesy hard rock with a real edge. So I heard he was good. His three-piece band is uh, Los Angeles based. He's from Wisconsin, but he moved out to LA like six years ago, which obviously you saw from the photo that I put on Facebook. I got to meet him afterwards and signed CD and all that kind of jazz, but uh, definitely a neat uh, up and coming guy. He uh, His set was 35 minutes long and he played not a lot off his debut CD, so he must be having a second CD come out, but uh, his set list was Last Chance, Don't Be Scared, Gone, Baby Can You Feel It, and then he broke out a uh, old wood grain flying V and came out and said, here's an old classic for you, and started playing Stranglehold for nice. nine minutes and totally demolishing nice. it. And as you saw from the picture, it kind of all makes sense. He actually looks like a young Ted Nugent. Yes, he does. Long, kind of brownish hair, you know, kind of uh, uh, goatee and all that kind of jazz. So he's uh, uh, not a ripoff of Nugent for sure. He's a disciple he's that, of the Nuge. That kind of dynamic stage presence and stage raps and everything. Uh, then... He, now see that to me is bands they called Greta Van Fleet the savior of rock and roll. To me, bands like like this, what's it James Nichols? That's the savior of rock and roll. The darkness, savior of rock and roll. Those are the guys who are carrying. Nothing against Greta Van Fleet. They just seem like something doesn't seem real about them to me. He ended up his set with End of Time, and he just basically took his guitar off at the end of his set. He promised the crowd that he would come out to the audience and go to the merch booth and sign stuff. So he literally took his guitar off, climbed down the steps at the front of the stage of the theater, and walked down the aisle signing stuff all along the way, and went straight from the stage up the aisle to the merch booth. So that's kind of an interesting way of doing it, that's for sure. I hope he sold a few so shirts that way. So I met him, and he had a line of like 50, 100 people or so. Nice. So, so he went over really well. Um, the crowd itself, as I said, the theater holds like 3,400 people. Um, I prob- can't believe there were 3,400 people there, right, Chuck Spear? I can't believe it. Probably in the neighborhood of 1,000 people. That's not bad. So it was not probably bad. about a third to a half full. Um didn't expect a lot more than that. Uh, Chicago is obviously a very big stronghold for UFO, uh, but that's a large place for them to play. And of course, having Saxon along, uh, but tickets were anywhere from like 40 bucks. And the tickets I had, fifth row center, were 125 a well, pop. Reserved. So uh, well, we saw them at the Independent. It was a small club. It holds maybe 400. It was packed. But it was no reserve seats. You could just stand wherever you wanted. There was no seats. Not everybody could afford it. Of course, everybody could afford their $9 beers, which there was probably, <laughs> I would say, a net average of four to five beers drank by every person in that theater. I think so. They got a so, huge guarantee for Lots of drunk people walking around. Good. So Chicago people are not afraid to get up in your face. That's okay. And, uh, and drink go towards the stage and interact with the band and get kicked out by security. It's always 
always amusing to go to a show around Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Um, Zach- we play when I was in Texas. We opened. For, uh, we played Chicago with. Uh, well, we played Maryville with Black Sabbath, like I said. But uh, we played Chicago with Body Count, and it was uh, quite the fun rock and roll crowd, to say the least. Came in after after maybe a 15, 20 minute uh, switch over, and they're still. Well, we're in Maryville. A guy came up and had a tad. I signed. His arm or some or his chest or something or I don't know. I signed a part of his body, his back or something like that. And he came back to the Maryville show with my autograph tattooed on his shoulder. Boy, I bet he regrets that now, man. Being their latest album, which came out a couple years ago, called Battering Ram. So they had a backdrop that said Battering Ram on it. Their first song in their set was actually the title track, Battering Ram. The uh, band pretty much consists of the same band they've had for 20 plus years. Obviously, Biff Byford on vocals as. Is that how you pronounce it, Byford? Uh, has been for many, many years. Uh, Paul Quinn on guitar, original guitar player. Nigel Glockner back on drums. He was with them after Pete Gill, so uh, I think it was. I want to say it was after Denim and Leather is when he joined so it was uh, it might have been Power and the Glory or the album before that is when he joined so he was part of the classic lineup so he's back with them and he had a really awesome kit double bass 8 or 10 peisty cymbals so obviously I was way into his setup (laughs) Um, on bass he's had uh, Nigel Nibs Carter for like almost 20 years. That guy's great. I love that bass player. Um, And then his other guitar player he's had for 23 years, I believe is what he said. Uh, And his name is escaping me. Dennis, I believe. Uh, But he's been with them since like the 90s. So so that lineup's been pretty solid. as much as Jared James Nichols' mix was tight and uh, a really good mix between the trio, uh, basically Saxon was everything was on eleven except the drums. Yep, you could not hear at all, and uh, you barely could hear the bass. Uh, but both guitars and they were blasting. Uh, Biff, his vocals were almost piercingly loud we were fifth row center and it was two walls of marshals and it was almost excruciatingly loud but obviously they're a straight ahead quote unquote British metal so not a lot of chances for dynamics in their music but after Battering Ram they went back to the 80's This Town Rocks and uh, then they played Sacrifice which is on I think one of their albums in the 2000s Uh, I've Got to Rock to Stay of Alive which again another newer song Power and the Glory back from the 80s is the next song Strong Arm of the Law classic Saxon I'm not singing any of these because I don't know any of these all I know from Saxon although I like them they were great live and they, they they were actually better than UFO but honestly the only song I know from Saxon is Wheels of Steel I am not a huge Saxon fan. I like I like them fine. Just I don't really know that much about them. They never they never came to San Francisco or to Jacksonville, Florida when I was growing up. The war. I think that's late eighties. Seven four seven strangers in the night. Oldie but goodie. Motorcycle man. Obviously another early eighties cut. Heavy metal thunder. And some of those cuts, he was actually giving the crowd a choice of what song to choose from like do you want to hear this do you want to hear this do you want to hear this and the, by the crowd response is what they would play uh, Crusader which is 1984 that's the first time I ever saw Saxon back in 84 in Evansville Indiana opening up for Motley Crue so I have a soft spot in my heart for that tour Dallas 1pm obviously one of their big hits and closing out with Denim and Leather and Princess of the of the Night so Hour and 20 minute co-headlining set for Saxon. 
and good crowd response. When I saw it, they okay, went over better than UFO. UFO, after about a 25-minute switchover, they came on uh, probably, it was 9... 9.45-ish, something like that. Uh, and I am so glad that I did not check set lists uh-huh. because they did I was exact- totally shocked and surprised that they had mixed up the set list quite a bit, okay. as you will see momentarily from the very first song. They literally came out on stage. I saw them, I think they opened with Baby Blue or something like that, a new song. Were introduced by their road manager. The crowd goes nuts, the thousand people that are there. And they open up with... We belong to the night. Oh, that's a good one. Mechanics. Nice mechanics. Are yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that w- I w- they did not play that when I saw them. I would have loved it. <sighs> yeah, they played some crappy newer song. It was lame. Going nuts. It was amazing. They sounded great. Then, right after that, they played. Um, Run, Boy, Run, which is off their most recent studio yeah, album. Yeah, I think they might have opened with that one when I saw them. Conspiracy of Stars. Obviously, they have that new cover album out yeah. that just came out a few weeks ago. Not good. Uh, luckily, they didn't really play anything off it good. because I don't want to hear UFO covering anybody. No. I just want to hear their tunes. So other, than, other than something else, the song Something Else, which is on Mechanics, I think. Uh, um, there's a couple of covers that they've done. Uh, um, Alone Again or is good. Yeah, but yeah, I don't want to hear him playing uh, Love Me Two Time, Babe. So We Belong to the Night opens up the show off of Mechanics. Amazing. Run Boy Run off of Conspiracy of Stars. Second song. Great song. Then third song introduced by Mr. A now totally bald-headed Mr. Phil Moss. Yes, yes. He comes up, bends down as he's known to do to look at the set list, and says, This is off the. and forgets what album it's off of. He goes, I think it's off of Obsession. Oh, nice. <laughs> Which he was right. Ain't no baby That's off of a g- Obsession. Oh, yeah. They did not play that one when I saw them either. Son of a bitch. That's a good one, man. I ain't no baby. So, we are uh, deep Shitting cut. your pants. Deep yeah. cut and deep cut. Why first. didn't they do that shit when we saw them? Chris Del Grande? Songs into the set. <coughs> so, already, the set is starting out amazing. Then, from there, interesting, you know, they got to play some of the hits. But they put lights out in the four spot, which That's was great. That's fine. That's fine. Um, obviously, you know they're going to play it. But to play it that early in the set was very surprising. Uh, then Only You Can Rock Me, obviously, they're uh, going to nice. play. Nice. That's fine. So they did that pretty That's early fine. in the set, even though it's one of my all-time favorites. Off of Obsession, which was my first UFO album. So I have a soft spot in my heart for that My one. first UFO album was Lights Out. All the time, and then I went back and bought Phenomenon and Force It and uh, all those. Then uh, back to Conspiracy no of Stars, pain. their most recent nah. CD, uh, Burn Your House Down, nah. which is a great ballad, it really is. And so the dynamics of that song uh, really broke up the set nicely. And then um, in between stage banter, obviously, is always hilarious with Mr. Mog. Um, to introduce Cherry, he says, here's a song, uh, we were out on the road back in the 70s, and uh, Mr. Parker back there on drums met a young lady, a, a dancer, and and I don't know what happened that evening, and he just goes into one of his vagaries, of course, and uh, says, yes, this is a song called Cherry. But meanwhile, Pete Way wrote the tune. And uh, halfway through the song, in the, the part where... Uh, Rob DeLuca plays the the Pete Way bass part. The lead bass part, obviously. Um, they screw up 
and they almost come to a complete stop and for like 45 seconds they're just going dun 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 they can get it back together and finally Phil gets back on beat where he's supposed to be and gotta give my love for cherry this for me it's not done but that was kind of comical and they're just all kind of looking wish I wasn't just passing through we are gold cracking up after the song he apologizes for his I'm sorry about brief, that for that brief something like a brain fade for or that something brief like that. brain fog it was comic relief and everybody loved it then they went into love to love obviously amazing uh, too hot to handle amazing uh, another song off of conspiracy of stars no. called mission of love no. great song no no then, no no, um, no, no. Closed out the main set with Rook Bottom. Bottom for 13 minutes. And they came back with Dr. Doctor. Then came back on out and did your typical shoot, shoot. Uh, Dr. Doctor and shoot, shoot. Right. So uh, an amazing night of music, a lot of music. So you had 35 minutes set from Jared James Nichols, which was amazing. You had an hour and 20 minutes of great music from Saxon, albeit way too loud, and then an hour and 20 minute headlining set from UFO. So I am feeling the effects of it on the way back home, but a great night of amazing classic rock and new rock. So anyway, hope it's all well, and uh, Mrs. Spear and I need to get out there and visit you and uh, yes. have a uh, night of... of uh, in studio requests and I'll make you I'll make you and your wife dinner. We'll have some tecates and you come down and do a show, friend. Missing about shows and good times out. and pay you a little bit of scratch. So there you go. Hope all is well. All right, you too. You you too can leave a show review or audio comment. Area code seven zero six six two one rock, or you can do like Chuck Spear did and record it on your phone and email it to me. Rock and Roll Geek at gmail.com. All right. I have another audio comment. This is from um, Dave J- Dave Jacobs, I think. Hello, Michael. Dave Jacobs, the hey, Rock, Dave and Roll Jacobs, Jew. Rock and Roll Long time Jew. no talk, man. How you doing? I'm Hope super doing great. Couldn't be better. Super great. I could not be better. Yes. Um, I want to give you a quickie review. I just finished listening uh, an hour or so ago to the new Foo Fighters album. Okay, this this by the way, he sent this audio call. This been this is how long it's been since I've done an in-studio rock and roll geek show. He sent this back. It's probably back in September, I think. All right, let me see if I can pull up the Foo Fighters so we can compare compare it together. Although I'm not a Foo Fighters fan, but uh, what's Concrete and Gold is what it's called. Okay, all right, back to you. Dave Jacobs. Concrete and gold. I know you're not a fan, but I am. And I bet you there's some other rock and roll geeks that are fans. So I'm going to give you a quick take on this new album. All right. I am going to give We'll compare. And this is not rock and roll geek scoring. This is just generic scale of 10. Oh, okay. There's 11 songs on the album. Six and a half, maybe seven out of 10. uh, It's It's not great. Right. It's all right. Yeah. 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 Decent. It's not. That means great. it's not I think good. I feel about this album, the same way you might feel about the latest Cheap Trick. You know, it's all right. It's good. There's some things on it that I enjoy. The good but, effort. Eh, it's not awesome. It's not blowing me away uh, by any measure. Um, so, I think what happened. There's like two things about this album that are kind of unique. It's a little bit different of an album than a typical Foo Fighters album. It's a little different. Uh, which I appreciate, and I admire their uh, ad, their you know ambition in doing something different, trying new things. So they got this producer, who's not a rock producer at all. He produces like Sia and Adele and very very pop type acts. Yeah, I heard that Justin Timberlake is on this album, and they're they yeah yeah. Eh, who cares. I think Dave Grohl had a very, very conscious decision to infuse the Foo Fighters sound with pop music on this album. And he did, for better or for worse, 
Well, does it That's have good pop happens. melodies? Sort of I can't. I can't even bring myself to sit down and listen to this record. I don't even care enough to listen to this Foo Fighters record. But back to you, Dave Jackson. Uh, I think that part. There's like two things that he did with his album. That part of it, I don't mind. It kind of. Right, why don't I do right now? A very very quick. Listen. Uh, Track by track review of the new Foo Fighters. All right, is that okay, Dave Jackson? I don't know if you're going to do one or not. I'll let, listen to a little bit more of his comment. I mean, it's different. Either you're going to like it or you're not. I didn't mind it. I thought it was okay. I thought it was interesting. I don't want to not mind an album. And for the most part, that worked out okay. Uh, another part of that element is that this album is also extremely Beatles influenced. I know that's going to drive you nuts. But I dig it. I, I like Beatles influenced influenced things. This is definitely the most uh, directly influenced Beatles. All right, quickly, uh, I'm gonna do a quick, a blazing fast track by track review of the new Foo Fighters. I don't wanna be king. His voice is annoying. I just wanna sing love song. All right. Pretend there's nothing wrong. All right, hurry up. It's all right. I don't want to be queen. Just trying to keep I take it it's going to get rocking pretty soon. All right, I'll give that one a half. Next song, Run. Overproduced. Wake up. Run for your life with me. Wake up. Eh, sounds fine. It's catchy enough. Half. Grabbing me. Get to the chorus. Zero. Next song. <laughs> Sky is a neighborhood. Uh, sounds like the first song. Sky is a neighborhood. Half. <laughs> La di da. I don't like the distorted vocals. Fast forward. Zero. Next song. Dirty Water. Next song. She was a friend of mine. No Half. I'm not giving it enough of a chance. I know. Happily ever after, zero after. Zero hour. Yeah. Very wings. Trying to sound like wings. Or Paul McCartney solo. This is not bad. Roses in the whiskey jar. Blood on the thorns. 
drinking till the taste is gone. Cracks in the floorboard are deep from dancing. All right, fast forward. Shangri-La now. Where is your Shangri-La now? Half Sunday rain. Half. Too much like Paul McCartney solo. Too much. Yes, I know what is truth, but a dirty black cloud coming out of the blue. I was wrong. I was right. I'm a blood moon born in the dead of Half! <laughs> Finally, concrete and gold. You lost your mind. Zero! Alright, let's tally him up. One, two, three, four out of eleven. There you go. Alright, back to you, Dave Jackson. <laughs> uh, four four out of eleven. Of album. I think this producer likes the Beatles. Uh, Dave Paul McC- it's not the it's that. not the Beatles, uh, Dave Jackson. It's Paul McCartney solo, Paul McCartney and Wings, or Paul McCartney it's solo. Very, very coming through on this album. So that's it's not Beatles. Album. It's Paul McCartney I solo. I think for the most part, like I said, that part basically worked out okay. The part that didn't work out for me, and I think when this album really falls short, is in the second goal, Songs. which appears to be to make this a huge, massive. Big sonically sounding album, nah. uh, just over the top. I don't even know how to describe it. Just a massive, huge sound. Hey, why not? Uh, and I think on that uh, measure, that's where it kind of had problems because it's big, it's massive, it's sonically out of this world. But that doesn't always make for a good song. Some of these songs. I don't know if you can tell, but somebody sent me an email that I need to oil my chair here. I have not oiled my chair. I am aware of that, okay? Who has time to oil a chair? Just don't uh, want a big sound, you know? You can't just bolt on a big sound. And how sound do you a oil a chair? Automatically make it better. Some songs are more adept to that, and some the songs are not. aren't great. There, there's, there's a couple of songs here. Production good, like Paul McCartney, but. Core, eh. It could have been a pretty okay song. They're not catchy. They're not, there's no good choruses. But then you bolt on this. Although I didn't let him go to the, get to the chorus in defense of Dave Grohl. Massive Would I play bass for the Foo Fighters? Ah, yes. Jet engine, way overblown sound, and it just kind of ruins the whole song, and just yeah, way too much for me. So, I think that's where the album sort of goes astray. He could have just reined it in a little bit. Not everything bigger is There was a lot bad. of hype about this album um, and when it came when it, before it came out, though, then when it just finally say, came out, uh, nobody seemed nobody seemed to really uh, care. Sky is a neighborhood's decent song. I like uh Make It Right is an interesting song. It's got a bit of funk in it, which is kind of interesting. Uh, cool three, I gave it a zero. I gave that one a zero. A, bit of a funk kind of vibe on a song. So I dug that one. Zero. Um, and there's a couple of songs that just completely miss for me. And then I think the one to really talk about is the title track at the uh, end. This zero was really built up big in the media as oh, this is the big incredible zero. Opus Pink Floyd track, you know. Zero. And it's Pink Floyd like, yes. And I'm a big Pink Floyd fan, so you're not going to put anything over a on me more. Yes, it's Floyd-ish, but it's a very bad attempt. It's boring. It fails miserably. Boring. Miserably. You know, it, it's got the little things in there. It's like he's trying to do, like you know, the end of Dark Side of the Moon, basically. But it's just so poorly executed. It's boring. It's just, it's just not good. Say it. It's not good. Boring. In fact, I remember I was listening to it, thinking this is really boring. Exactly. So on that one, a complete nutter fail. Like I said, the rest of the album, hit and miss. 
some nice things, some things that didn't work. I appreciate the ambition. Four trying to do out of 11. Different. It worked sometimes. It didn't work sometimes. Four so out of 11. Like six and a half or a seven out of 10. Okay. Not awesome. And uh, that's it. So talk. All right. Thank you, Dave Jack. I don't know his audio comment cut off, but you two can leave me a, an album review. Area code seven. Uh, how about this? Give me a track-by-track track review of the new Darkness record, and we will do a Darkness track-by-track. Track. And give me a track-by-track track of the new Professionals record. We'll do a track-by-track track of that as well. The new Professionals, What in the World, the new Darkness is called Pinewood Smile. Send it to, record your audio comments, send it, email it, and send it to, uh, record it on your phone, and email it to me at rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Or you can call your echo 706 rock but it'll probably get cut off. So, All right. Have anything else? Yes, I do. Uh, when I had Paul Underwood in, we t- this was right after Tom Petty died, and we were talking about um, bands that would that uh, would you you would cry if somebody in the band died. And I think I said if Joe Perry died, I would probably cry. When Chrissy Chrissy Amphlett from the from the uh, Divinals died, I cried. I will probably cry when, when Angry Anderson from Rose Tattoo dies. Which, by oh, but speaking of that, of crying, uh, I want to say rest in peace to George Young, um, brother of, was he brother or uncle? I don't know. He's part of the, the Young f- from ACDC. He was one third of the brainchild of ACDC. Without, without Malcolm, Angus, and George, there would be no ACDC. Well, now. There is only Angus left in ACDC. George Young is going to be missed more than people know. George Young, very, 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 very important to ACDC. And had a lot of creative input in ACDC. Even played ba- rumored to play bass on Powerage. George Young, rest in peace. Angus... Let's hear the solo album, blue solo album. We don't need ACDC anymore, friend. We don't. George Young's gone. Malcolm's gone. Rest in peace, George Young. All right. I, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right. So anyway, bands of you cry if they die. So when Angry Anderson dies, I'll probably cry. When Chrissy Amphlett died, I cried. Um, when Joe Perry and Steven Tyler die, I'll probably cry. But when the world... In general, in the world, I think when Keith Richards dies, people will cry. Gen- the The world will go into mourning. Mick, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, the world will go into mourning. Uh, Rod Stewart, uh, you'll probably get a decent tribute. I don't think people will cry. But anyway, I got a couple of emails. Hello, Michael Butler. My name is Doug Steele, and I'm from Detroit. I've been listening to your Rock and Roll Geek Show podcast for about a year and a half now, and I love every minute of it. To quote Lover Boy, I wish you did it daily, but I understand. If I could, if I was getting paid, if I got more donations, um, Doug, I would do the show daily. I enjoy doing the dog days of podcasting. If I was getting enough donations to uh, to pay for it, I would be doing it daily because I like it. But I got to make a living, friend. First of all, I was listening to today's podcast, 807. I have a list of guitar players. I would cry if they died. Because this was the episode that I did with Paul Underwood. He came over and we did a, um, he did, he, we did a home invasion, which you too can do a home invasion. If you donate $200 and you come to San Francisco, I will make you dinner. We'll drink a lot of Tecates. We may even have some wine and you, we can come down and do a show. Well, Paul Underwood came down and, and we talked about this. <laughs> So here's a list of, so, okay, back to Doug Steele. I have a list of guitar players I would cry if they died. Stevie Ray Vaughan, on August 27th, 1990, when I found out, I called my wife, which who was my girlfriend then, and I cried. At work, no less, like a fat chick that got stood up at the prom. I would cry if Ace Freely died. He's a huge hero of mine. I even play a Black Les Paul because of him. Would I cry if Ace Freely died? No, I'd be kind of sad. I'd be kind of sad if Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons died, too, to be honest with you. David Gilmore, I'd cry if he died, he says. Uncle Ted, Ted Nugent. Yeah, if Ted Nugent died, I would cry. The, what's sad, the sad thing about it is if Ted Nugent died, 
on Facebook, people would be rejoicing like the Wicked Witch was killed. That's the fucking pisses me off, man. But yes, I would cry if if Uncle Ted died, if Ted Nugent died. And like you, anyone from like you said, anyone from Cheap Trick. Yeah, if anybody from Cheap Trick dies, I will cry. I definitely will. Bunny Carlos included. A few more things. I was born in 1968 in Detroit, and I love Susie Quattro. I worked for her cousin at a, at a General Motors plant at General Motors years ago in the design group, huh? I love Susie Quatcher too, Doug Steele. Love her, love her, love her. I interviewed her a long time ago. I should repost that episode. I interviewed her like when I was only podcasting for like a year. I gotta, I gotta dig that one out and pull it out. She was very nice, and she's a, she's an icon. She should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. My first concert was Kiss with opening band Cheap Trick at the Pontiac Silverdome, July 1979 at the young age of 11, and both instantly became my two favorite bands. I think I saw them on that tour. Was that Rock and Roll Over tour? I think it might have been. Well, let me take a sip of this fine Tecate. I'm almost done with the third one here. Ah, I've just finished. Nothing but backwash. I also wanted to give you a heads up on a great rock documentary on Netflix called A Band Called Death. A great Detroit punk rock band with three black brothers. I have added an attachment of my favorite song they did in 1973 called Politicians in My Eyes. Great stuff. If you haven't heard them, it's worth a watch. I saw that DVD or that um, Netflix, um, Doug. It was pretty good. I love your podcast and I will donate soon. I'm just getting over very expensive cancer treatments, and now I'm cancer-free. Well, thank God for that, Doug. (laughs) Cancer treatments. Holy shit, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm very glad you got over cancer. Cancer sucks ass. (sighs) So he's younger than me. Let me see. Was age age 11 at 79? I was 17 or 18. Yeah, you're younger than me. You don't need to have cancer at your age, friend. I'm glad it's a gone. I hope it does. Let's pray that it does not come back, Doug. I love your podcast, and I will donate very soon. I'm just getting a very expensive cancer treatment. Now I'm cancer-free. My insurance is my new cancer, fuckers. Yeah, I, I hear you, friend. Thanks again, your friend of the show, of the show Detroit Chapter. And also, regarding the same stuff, by the way, thank you, thank you, Doug, Doug Steele, for that. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm seriously glad you're free of cancer. Here's why, a say, on the same subject from Tim Smith, the rock and roll uh, runner. Oh, he's PhD. Are you a PhD, Tim Smith? I did not know that. Okay, Michael, here's one. I would say this guy is extremely comparable to Tom Petty. He's kind of the Northern American, North American version of the Southern Tom Petty. Everybody loves him. He wrote wonderful, very American-sounding, catchy tunes. Just like Tom Petty, he had a backing band with a name. That man would be, to- would be Bob Seger. Signed, Tim Smith, Ph.D., runsmith.net. Adjunct professor of chemistry, University of Dayton. All right. Would I cry if Bob Seger died? I saw Bob Seger open for the Doobie Brothers on when Life Bullet just came out. A lot of people in the Midwest probably would seriously cry if, if Bob Seger died. I know my friend Casey Crenshaw would die, would uh, cry if Bob Seger died. I'm a fan of Bob Seger. I would not cry, but I can certainly understand how you would, Tim Smith. How about a little bit of Bob Seger while I go use the bathroom? He wants to dream like a young man With the wisdom of an old man his home and security He wants to live like a sailor at sea Beautiful loser Where you gonna fall When you realize You just can't have it all He's your oldest and your best friend He'll be there again He's always willing to be second best A perfect lodger, a perfect guest Beautiful loser Read it on the wall And realize you 
just can't have it all Just can't have it all You just can't have it all There you go. The great Bob Seger. I have not heard that song in a long time. Thanks, Tim Smith, for reminding me about that. All right, why don't we do a vinyl track of the week? Here we go. And now, it's time for the Rock and Roll Geek Vinyl Track of the Week. Thank you so much, friend of the show, Michael Street, for sending me this. This is a vinyl double album double lp of the replacements is called replacements for sale live at maxwell's 1986 i believe i saw them on this tour we uh went to new york city with singer for stevie stiletto ray mckelvey ray may ray stevie ray stiletto we went and saw the replacements at irving plaza i believe they played probably played around the same time as this this is a great <laughs> packaging, man. It's a double gatefold. I think it's 180 gram vinyl. It feels like, I don't know what 180 gram is, but it feels like thick vinyl. It's on Sire Records. Folds out. On the front cover, it's got um, Paul Westerberg's beat up Les Paul, and it says for sale scratched into it. And on the back, it's got Tommy Stinson's Rick and ba- beat up Rick and Backer bass. You fold it out. It's got a bunch of live shots from them playing Maxwell's in Hoboken, New Jersey. Recorded in 19, 1986 when uh, Tim, I believe Tim had just come out. Thank you so much, Michael, Michael uh, Street, for this. I really appreciate it. I'm going to play something from this. I'm going to play something from Side B. It's a double album. I'm going to play a Kiss tune. They do, they do Black Thumb. Here's the track listing on this album. Let me get talking to the microphone like a professional. They open up with Heyday, which is I believe is on um, Hoot Nanny. Then Color Me Impressed, Dose of Thunder. Then you do a cover of Fox on the Run, Hold My Life, which is uh, on um, Tim, I believe. I Will Dare from Let It Be, Favorite Thing from Let It Be, Unsatisfied from Let It Be, Can't Hardly Wait, which at this point is unreleased. The top Paul Westerberg's doing different lyrics. Uh, Tommy gets his tonsils out, which is on Let It Be. Taking a ride, taking a ride. Is that what's that on? Is that on Hoot Nanny? No, I think that's on. Um, uh, Sorry, Ma. I don't remember. Bastards of Young from Tim. Kiss Me on the Bus from Tim. Black Diamond is on. Is on. Um, uh, Let It Be. Johnny's gonna die. 
on Hoot Nanny, I believe. Auto, I don't know what auto is from. I'm in trouble. Left of the dial. Goddamn job. Answer machine. Waitress in the sky. Take me down to the hospital. Gary's got a boner. If only you were lonely. Baby strange. Hitching a ride. Nowhere man. Go and fuck school. I'm going to play the last song on side B, which is a kiss tune, Black Dime. Let me, let me drop the needle here. See, up, I just put the power off. Okay, here we go. All right. Thank you, Michael Street, for this once again. I really appreciate it, friend. Thank you again, Michael Street. By the way, I'm, re- I'm reading this book, Trouble Boys, The True Story of the Replacements by Bob... Oh, Trouble Boys, The True Story of the Replacements by Bob Mayer. I'm about halfway through it. It's a very, very long book, but it is great. I just don't have that much time to sit down and read, but it is a very entertaining book. Replacements, The True Story of the Replacements by Bob Mayer, Trouble Boys. I'm going to... I may try to get Bob Mir on the show. This, the book may be dead in the water by then, and he may not want to be promoting it still. He wrote the um, liner notes to the, for this vinyl as well. It's like a, there's a, um, an inside sleeve that has uh, that he wrote vinyl. It tells a story of the of the recording of this album live at Maxwell's Hoboken. It's good. That guy's a good writer, and he, you can tell he's a, a true replacements fan. Thanks again, Michael Street, for sending me that. I really appreciate it. All right, I'm going to play one more song, and we're going to get out of here. Thank you so much for listening, friends. 
I hope it wasn't too disjointed, but if it was, eh, what are you going to do? Thank you, everybody who donated. Let me tell you how you can... Re- By the way, thanks... Uh, <sighs> Without your donations, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you get it. Thank you for donating, friends. Find this show at rockandrollgeek.com. Send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Find me on the Facebook, R&R Geek. Find me on the Twitter, R&R Geek. Find me on the Instagram, rockandrollgeek, don't ask. All right. Let's hope I survive crabbing tomorrow and get in, bring in some crabs. If, if it's too rough for me to go out, I'm going to keep my kayak on the truck and I'm going to go out again Sunday. The wife is going, taking the dogs, uh, taking one of the dogs on a rabbit hunt, which I'm not going to do because, uh, somebody has to stay here with the rest of the dogs because Brian is out of town. So I'm going to be here alone. I'm going to go fishing tomorrow. If it's not too rough, then Sunday, I'm going to go again if it is, if it was too rough on Saturday. Hopefully, I will get some crab. I will invite Shockey over for some crab feast, and hopefully, I'll survive. But just in case, I'm going to post this show tonight. Thank you for listening, friends. I really appreciate it. They can't all be professional. As a matter of fact, none of them will be professional, but I can promise you they are from my heart. And from my heart, I thank you for listening, friends. I really appreciate it. All right, I'm going to close out with a brand new song from Hardcore Superstar. They have an album coming out. I'm not sure when it's coming out, but this song was this song was released about a week ago. It's called Have Mercy on Me. Thanks for listening, friends. We will talk to you. Let's see. Uh, early next week, I think I'll post the Michael Street in, um, guest host spot and let the chips fall where they may on that one. Then I'll either do a uh, professionals track by track or a darkness track by track. We'll see, friends. Let me know which one you'd rather hear first. Rock and roll geek at gmail.com or send me the Facebook message. All right, here's Hardcore Superstar. Thanks for listening, friends. We'll talk to you soon.
to rock and roll geek train wreck 